Welcome to back to game devs play games. Gunner of Crumhorn awaits you patiently, pacing back and forth as you put down your bags and muddy boots, where we play games while talking game design. Finally, you're here. I have good news. We got a hold of one of Hogarth's former men. The healer who damn near killed you with the fire poke is standing nearby. He's picking chunks of dry blood out of his fingernails. Gunner of Crumhorn laughs. And we're playing more Battle Brothers. As it turns out, yeah, we're playing more Battle Brothers. As it turns out, he's not just a healer, but a torturer. We had a nice I mean... little talk with the man, and now he know we know where Hogarth's licking his wounds. I'm eager to rid myself of him once and for all. Made by Overhyped Studios. <laughs> We give him a way to look and then ask, we should do this every episode. No. Well, where is he? Gunner of Crumhorn straightens up as though the excitement had lost of him a fair bit of composure. Oh, right. He's hiding out in some small hut on a plain to the northwest of here. I'll mark it on your map. Apparently he managed to gather uh, more men in a short time since your battle. I suspect he knows the Affinity Brothers is on his heels like a bunch of bloodhounds. Good luck. We'll return with his head. <laughs> Bam. Right. So, um, so it's nighttime. That means things could attack at night. That's kind of cool. What can you do in town in nighttime? Just like go to the bar? For the yes. Inn? If the, the the bar or the harbor. That's the only things I've seen open. The harbor? Yeah. We can pay oh. money to travel straight to um, a city. Oops. Their boat. I guess that makes sense. Sort Although, of. I guess technically I could just... You can travel over the... Oh, there it is. Oh, that's Hogarth's Refuge. Uh, yeah, be, you can actually travel over water, and I guess this assumed you just, like, built a quick boat or something. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, you can just, like, use it to quick travel to cities is nice. Swam full gear. That's what I imagine. <laughs> Damn this armor. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and go. Actually, wait a second. Let's take a look at our men real quick. Many question of the day. Do you guys like it when we take our time with games like this and read all the things and look at all the numbers? I'm curious, because we had I mean, a huge a fallout question. on uh, Civ 6, which, to be fair, we didn't do as much playing as we did talking. Well, <laughs> but I'm, yes. I'm just curious. I assume if you've made it to episode three of this, you're probably into that. It makes sense. Uh, it's, it's always... One trouble we've always had is that since we want to sit there and discuss all the nuances of the game, people might get a little frustrated. Because you'll notice you travel a lot slower over certain areas. Um, oh, but, which allows time to pass. Mm -hmm. ah, I like so that. So roads you'll travel a lot faster on. Caravans always travel on mm. roads. And they did an update where you can... I don't know if we can do it in this uh, in the game currently, but you can attack just anybody. Like you could basically just become bandits. Like, um, you're a person. Let's kill you. So there's a... Yeah, so that's one of our challenges that we've had is that we like have to talk about game design and stuff like that. And while we're doing that, we're just kind of chilling out. Now, I'm not just doing that to be a dick right now. I'm actually trying to heal up here. It's, it's taking a little bit. So what uh, I'm going to do is okay. I'm, I'm so going to set up you're camp. Waiting. Bam. Set up camp. Things go a lot faster. Ah. Zoop, 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 zoop. Yeah, I like that. I like how they handle time. It, it They make it flow very naturally. It looks like we are almost there. And imagine, like, while I, I think this would have been a uncommon design choice, but imagine time went faster when you crossed the uh, the water rather than your character moving slower. Like, that that minor detail makes it make so much more sense than it could have, right? Like, changing the player's movement speed or the character's movement speed feels so much more natural than doing it the other way around. Oh, absolutely. Plus, everything else would move a lot faster. Like, you know, the moment mm -hmm. I hit camp, the caravan just shot straight past us oh, because yeah. the time was passing. So, I, I know that they also added more speed options in addition to that, mm -hmm. just so you can get through and travel through the world faster and all that. Anyway, so, we're attacking them. Your scouts report that he has seen the following. Uh, a few bandit thugs and a bandit marksman. Sometimes you don't know what you're fighting. <laughs> Can you and also like... don't give you an exact number. They'll say, like, one or a few or many, basically. Is there any, like, ogre battle system where you can, like, fight someone and then, like, take some of their people? 
That'd be Not really interesting. that I'm aware of. I haven't seen anything about converting people yet. It'd be very... I think it'd be a little out of place for this game, but I, I could see it being possible. I could see it being possible considering it's a game about mercenaries. They're not really concerned... Like, most people you're fighting don't really care. And if you just Jane killed from everyone Firefly from their... used to be an enemy. I mean... Right? Like, if you killed everyone on... on in their their band of mercenaries they're gonna be like well i'm not gonna keep fighting with them because they're all dead yeah right <laughs> all right so uh, let's have my archer or crossbow move a little bit closer so 39 percent chance to hit 49 percent chance to hit do things like trees prove to be obstacles um they okay so the 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 range system is actually kind of interesting uh, you generally are considered covered by something and you have a much smaller chance to hit them if there's something right in front of them. So for instance, if, I, if an enemy or an ally was right in front of this guy in either of these two spaces, he would be harder to hit by like like 20% or something. It's, wow. pretty, it's pretty significant. So same thing with the tree though. If he's right behind the tree, I immediately have a negative chance to hit him. And of course, uh, unless I'm flanking all the way over here. But something. it only really comes to play if that character is close to it, though. Yeah. So you, so yeah. you want to rush toward that tree or rush behind somebody or something like that. I feel like from a programming standpoint, that handles it a lot more uh, elegantly than it it might be if they try to make like a line of sight system, because that's that yeah. in itself is a lot of work. Um, but instead, they kind of made that mechanic come through on like the character's position in the terrain rather than like what the person using the ranged equipment can see yeah and 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 that's vision's always been a weird thing and they handle it relatively elegantly in this game so it's not really too much of a concern most of the time so cool thing about shield walls if you uh if you use shield wall next to each other you get an additional five percent bonus for each of them Solid. So, I, for, I rather if I guess I had somebody here, then all three of them would get plus ten, mm -hmm. and it's because it's a shield wall. It's protect the person to your left, you know. X Man versus X Man. Let's do it. All right, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we're gonna move here. You know, even though his face is healed, he still is pretty ugly. You know, <laughs> that's basically the case help. with most characters. <laughs> all right, so there's Hogarth the Weasel. Yeah, we haven't talked a lot about the art style, but what do you think about the fact that they're like... I mean, obviously, the art is supposed to be representative of where they are in, in like, positions, but they kind of just read as floating torsos. And, like, that's obviously not... They're not going for, like, oh, it's cute, like, chibi, right? Like... Oh, yeah. No, they're just, like, going for a more kind of, I guess... They're, it's, they're, it's they're, like they compact. look like busts. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it's like they could, they chose to not go with the full body because the proportions would not work very well with a hex uh, mm -hmm. board unless they use giant hexes. So I, I think aesthetically speaking, they kind of like struck a happy medium, even if like the floating torso thing is a little weird. <laughs> But it, it, it leads, I think it, it, it does its job well. Uh, to be perfectly honest, it's when I first looked at it and I saw how the characters looked and I saw how the characters died and everything, that's one reason I didn't immediately buy it. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm, I don't know if that looks good enough for me. It, it's a very good case of, um, oh, and I said this a lot when I was in school actually, but art is usually what sells a game first and foremost. You mm -hmm. could have the most elegantly designed game in the entire world. It could be beautiful it could be perfect even but people aren't going to buy it if they don't understand yeah the system it they're, they're look gonna it. look at it and say like does this look good does it look bad i'm gonna buy it if it looks good and just kind of forget about it if it doesn't um boom but it's good game design that keeps players in it and talking about it and gets good reviews and all and that builds stuff. up a community and exactly which is arguably more important for the long term of, of trying to sell a game, but if you can't get like those initial sales from having your game look at least good enough, then you never really build that momentum. Yeah, it's it's a very support, interesting. Doesn't matter how good it looks. Then. It's like game design business talk right now with GDPG, but not True. to say that we're super experienced with it because we don't have any commercial games yet. But it's it's important to think about. So let's talk a little bit about what's happened so far. Okay. Um, I basically squared off into two teams with my range guy as a go-in-between for whoever needs it most. 
And as expected, my ex guy's ruining somebody's day, but he's in trouble next round. So I, I kind of backed him up with, uh, backed him up with the, the two ranger guy right here. Which once he gets here, he'll be able to hit either of these guys. And that's the dude we're really trying nice. to kill, right? Uh, this guy right here, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. and he's Hubbard. actually, despite them calling him a coward, he's actually a really tough guy. Mm. Like his his character's really well skilled. He will mess your people up. Um, so basically. Uh, there's also a, a thing I forgot to talk about before. We have a in, like so when you when you run out of AP or when you're down to one and you can't do anything else, mm -hmm. you'll auto end your turn. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also optionally auto end your turn, or you can wait. And if you uh, wait, uh, you do that because like for instance, if this guy can tech two spaces away, he might want to stay behind this dude right here. Mm -hmm. But if Wolf hasn't gone yet, I can wait until Wolf does go. It'll put me at the back of the line, and then next turn. I will, it will take my initiative factor, mm. uh, which I don't know what this guy's is, so he has a 77 initiative, it's pretty low. Um, so it would like take his initiative factor and, and pair it with the fact that he took, went later next turn, and so the following round, he would go a little slower. So like, there, the initiative is a big thing if you decide to put any stock into it. Uh, it's okay. either like, you go first or you don't, mm -hmm. is really kind of how it feels. Um, Regardless, cool, it's still though. important. So this guy over here is being a dick, shooting arrows and stuff at me. And it doesn't seem like they have the, like, your guy goes, an enemy guy goes, your guy goes, an enemy guy goes. It's it, completely initiative-based. Yeah, which I, I appreciate. I think that's really important for a strategy game. I think Boom. that alternating system works better in an RPG setting. And while this has RPG elements, it's not an RPG. It's I did not realize he was a melee. Sorry. Yes, it's... Sorry, go on. Though, though it's not an RPG, or it has RPG elements, it's not quite... Yeah, yeah. it's it's more strategy-focused. So I, that's why I think that it's more important that they don't do the alternating system to make sure that everyone, like, has, like, the fair amount of actions. Absolutely. I've always been a fan of strong initiative systems. That's always been one thing that's really sold me. God, oh, so good. Um, wow, so the Pitchfork has range of two? Yes. That's nice. Pitchforks have range of two. There's also... Do spears have a range of two? Uh, they don't, uh, but really? pole arms do. So spears uh, okay. were always... Spears so, were always generally used to... Were, uh, five to seven feet long, depending, but pole arms were anything considered, I think, eight feet or longer. That's fair. And a spear, or a, a, a pitchfork in this case, is a pole arm. But there's also one of my favorite weapons of the, the, the Dark Ages or Medieval Era in general is the Bill Hook, which is a... Um, it is a pole arm that actually was able to stab or cut you or it had a hook where you would grab somebody by the armor and drag them in. And that's a weapon <laughs> in the game. And it's that's great. That's awesome. Um, now, granted, I haven't got like a lot of use out of it in terms of its ability, but, but I can have, you actually pull enemies in the field? You can. You can yes. pull them closer to you. So there's a lot of pushing effects in the game, but that one actually pulls them toward you. And it's the only thing I've seen that does it. And it's meant like... If you have a bunch of people that are like lining up with their shields, like you'll you can do a shield walls, pretty common tactic. And your opponent's doing the same thing, and then all of a sudden you have a guy with billhook come out of nowhere, and he's like, "Get over here!" and it completely just destroys their whole setup. So Battlefield is, control in games like this are so satisfying, but I, I think when used well, they're like really will what will be what makes or breaks combat for me in a game like this. Battle movement in general is the thing that will break any tactics game mm -hmm. more than most. So right now I can shoot this guy, but notice how it has that little arrow sh uh, shield thing, yeah. right? So basically it's saying he's being blocked by the guy in front of him. Ah. So that's why I only have a 29% chance to hit him. If I miss, there's a chance that I hit my guy instead, oh. which I'm going to do and hope that I don't shoot my guy instead. But the bonus to that is um, if there was enemies here or something like that, there would be a chance that I would hit them by accident instead. Hmm. So you could just shoot out of a group of enemies and... Oh, okay, so womp just, womp. just standard miss. Alright, so this guy is a pain with his shield, but luckily axes have an ability called split shield. <laughs> Convenient! And they always... Splitting a shield always has like a 100% chance to hit. Bam. So granted, I didn't get to attack that turn, but this guy's literally like three times or twice as easy to hit now. Have you lost any guys yet? Nope. Wow. Yeah, I uh, I, I planned it out pretty well. I, so I've got this archer to worry about, and I've got these two guys, and then uh, that's it. So Solid. the pitch or pitchfork has the repel ability. I think I'm just gonna try to kill this guy. I probably won't, but so notice says he has armor, right? Mm -hmm. And then he has health. So let's take a look real quick at our pitchfork ability. So impale with the basic attack. 
So it's going to inflict, it can, when it attacks, it inflicts 30 to 50 damage to hit points, of uh, of which 0 to 15 will can ignore armor. Mm, okay. So there's a random chance to do damage to their body, to their health, instead of just their armor. And then on top of that, uh, it says how much damage uh, impale will, will deal to armor. And mm-hmm. pitchforks have a plus 10% chance to hit. I didn't realize that. That's awesome. That's why they've been destroying this battlefield. Do Pit- characters perform... Uh not as good after they take damage. Yes. Because so, they get wounds, right? If you get wounds, and wounds are bad. Like, there's there's ones that'll be like, uh, minus 30% ch- chance for melee, minus 30% chance for range, minus 30% chance to all your dodges. Mm. And that character is basically unusable now. Mm. I mean, until they heal, or if it's a permanent thing, you should probably just let them go, because they're never going to be able to perform up to snuff ever. I think that's a really important choice, though, to have the wound system, because... Otherwise, I'd almost argue that it was kind of arbitrary to have the, like, How much dealing damage? armor damage and health damage. Because, like, at a certain point, you would argue, like, well, I'm not going to kill this person before and I break their, their armor, armor. So I'd rather That's just break their armor. That's always been an issue with a lot of games. Yeah. But if you take 15 or more damage to your health in one attack, you will receive or can receive a a, a wound. That's good. I, um, I really like and that. There's abilities that allow you to deal more wound or damage to a person uh, without even having to deal that or without having to deal 15 where you can only deal like 10 and you'll still accomplish it. And, and I think that especially works too because what it does is it sets up the game to have a lot more complex uh, micro strategies. Yes. Like you can build specific units or or small teams of units to try to take out enemies a certain way using that system Mm -hmm. um i think that's really smart it's uh it it also allows for a lot of weapon variants um Mm -hmm. the reason that uh like arrows you can shoot a lot more of in the game not not crossbows but actual bow and arrow you can Mm -hmm. shoot a lot more of in the game um but crossbows will deal more damage directly to hit points which ah. makes them in that way more valuable, but you're only going to be able to shoot it once per turn. They, the, mm. Those two weapons function very different, and it's awesome. Um, my spear, as I said, it's mostly good for whittling down armor. I'm not going to be able to kill a person with a spear before their armor's gone, unless I hit them in the head. Mm-hmm. Which is like doing a critical hit. But there's some characters that are just have like perks toward hitting people in the head, or do more damage if they hit them in the head. Boom, and finish them off. Wow, oh, dang. All right, so that archer's all the way back there, and I bet you he's... Running? Yeah, I bet you he's running, <laughs> so I'm actually just going to forget him. I'm going to back up here, because once this fight's... Like, once I, I kill Hogart, I think that'll be the, the tipping point, and the archer will probably run away. It's interesting, too, that enemies can kind of disappear off of the battlefield, and, like, you'll expand what you can see based on where your characters are. Yeah. Because it doesn't seem like there's a lot that would generally happen outside of the current visible field because you can already see a lot which i suppose could change based on your environment yeah um it does the environment changes it there's characters with better vision less vision Mm -hmm. um so scouting is thing you can purchase war dogs um they're technically like an item that you equip but you can release them at the beginning of the match Mm -hmm. And they will scout ahead and find enemies for you. That's cool. Or if an enemy like that archer was running away, you could release the dog to go chase after him so he couldn't run away anymore. Uh, and war so, dogs are not oh, to be okay. trifled with. So at a certain point, they do kind of utilize a lot more space on the battlefield, which also makes sense because you can have 12 people in oh, your yeah. party. Um, also imagine that, this, so these are higher areas. If you are in melee and you have a higher space, then you have like a 10% advantage on your opponent. Mm. It's harder for you to be hit, harder for you to hit them. And I've seen a battlefield range um, up to five before, mm. five up and down. And then you have this wow. really interesting nifty thing right here where you can raise the camera. Okay, wait, that's not what oh, I'm doing. Oh, so it, and, it highlights well, levels of elevation. Yep. Ah. So this is showing the bottom level, and then so it's making those blacked out, but if I go up, bam, I so can see So basically, if, if the terrain is blocking your characters from being seen, that's your way of kind of controlling it. Yes. Which is, honestly, I think that's a lot better than being like, rotate the camera, which is what they did in Tactics. Worked in Tactics, but like... It was still sometimes hard to see things. It yeah. just... I think a lot of the aesthetic choices they made in this game was actually for visibility. That's why the characters are are small. They basically fit one hex, so they don't overlap very much. Um, And even, like, the tree is a good example, where it, like, when you're behind it, it... um, You can't really see it there. uh, 
what is it called? They like turn it transparent, right? So that the only part that isn't transparent is about the size of a hex. Mm -hmm. It's there's a lot of smart aesthetic choices, even if it's not the prettiest in the world. It's still is really good, all things considered. I don't want to say it's an ugly game. Um, it just got a very specific style that's meant to look ugly. Is really is. <laughs> Yeah, it, well, it's, it is. They're, right? they're choosing function over form, is, is ultimately how I see it. And while the form is still really good, the function took um, precedence. And mm -hmm. I, I think it, from a gameplay perspective, works very, very well and is super important in a strategy game. Because imagine how frustrating it would be if characters overlapped and it was just hard to see where everything was on the field. Mm hmm. Kind of makes would, you feel like not playing. You, yeah, I was about to say, it would make you not want to play. <laughs> Ooh, well, he actually came back. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. What's his, uh... Oh, well, he's not going anywhere. I have to run back after him. That's annoying, actually. All right, come on, man. If, like, he just hits him once, this fight's pretty much over. But I've missed him, like, three times in a row now. Slippery guy. Like a weasel. weasel. <laughs> All right. But now I'm going to be able to surround him, finally. And notice how I am full up on fatigue now. I can't do anything. I just moved over and now I can't use him. <laughs> cool. So next, I'm like, you recover fatigue every turn though, so. Mm. Um, you know one thing that I think is works very well with having all of your characters always face to the right and enemies to the left? Mm. There's no concept of backstabbing, which means you never have to worry about where, where your character is facing. True. Which works in a lot of tactics games but almost always becomes one of the most tedious things is I, like facing your characters damn that's hit me all of a sudden i don't like it um there is a move like called hey there we go he finally hits and now Ooh. now i'm gonna win because of that one hit like look at that archer missed all all fight the whole fight he missed and then all of a sudden he gets one hit bam Dead. done nice. um it's uh there there's also I mean there's a move called backstab but really all that move does is if they're surrounded by enemies then you have a better bonus to hitting them so it's oh, not okay. even really a backstab it's just like the fight is almost simulationist and that you're assuming that people are moving around mm -hmm. um, so I just uh, so I moved over the guy he had a, a little item bag on the ground and so I moved over him. You can see it right there next to him. Mm -hmm. So I can actually pick up that item off the ground. Ah. Now the benefit to doing this you is that when the it. fight's over, I only have a percentage chance to grab all the loot on the field. Oh, okay. And that's because the idea is like you're grabbing stuff and going because other bandits are probably on right. their way. So, so this ensures that you get something. Yeah, I, like and I just that. picked up a really good sword from that song. Is it Falchion? Yes, my favorite sword ever. <laughs> All right, wait, bam, kapow! You ain't going nowhere, son. Oh damn! Yeah, you've got pretty good movement in this game. Yeah, you can you can move up to four, um, and that allows you to. All right, I guess you're oh you're fatigueful. Y yeah, you can move up to four, um, and that allows you to like really catch in on those range characters, um, and that's and in that one way they actually kind of solve the range versus melee problem that a lot of tactics games suffer. Yeah, and I'm surprised that the game works as well as it does too because of all the tactics games that you and I have designed systems for, adding more movement tends to break the games that much faster. Oh yeah. Um, but it, it works pretty well in this one. Yeah. Alright, fine. We'll grab it next turn. And hope my shield guy doesn't die in the meantime. Shield wall, save my life. And I'll just hold here, keeping him in combat until my other guys can arrive. All right. So now we're just mopping up this guy. Normally, by now, he would be like just running for his life. <laughs> for whatever but, reason, he's decided. Yeah, he's gonna something fight happened six with guys. the. He must have succeeded on some morale check that I wasn't expecting him to, and uh, next turn he's gone. <laughs> you have no hope. <laughs> there is no hope for you. So crossbows are different from range in that you you can uh, it costs two movement to shoot or two AP to shoot, really mm. low, but it costs seven to reload. So usually you can sense. end up alternating between the two, and yeah, it does make a lot of sense. All right, pick this thing up, Kapal. Oh, I didn't want to do that. It's fine. 
I could have accidentally left my own item on the ground. Ah. Eh, can I get here? Nope. Done. Oh, so do they they kind of set up everything in rounds? Yep. I didn't notice that. Uh, it is tur it is round eight. Normally fights will only last about five or six rounds, and mm. we actually killed him around round at the very end of rounds five or six. So had this guy actually fled, uh, then the fight would have been over like it should be. Eh? Yeah, he lived. <laughs> and... Look at Duato. Oh, come on, finish him off. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Honestly, I don't think it's. I don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> For um, probably killing your own guy in exactly. the process. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. All right. So if he doesn't die in the process, I probably should have been smarter about that. So like, if this guy tried to run right now, I think every single one of these guys would get a chance to hit him before he could get away. <laughs> cool. There we go. All right. Nice. Ugh. All right, so we lived with everybody, which is actually pretty awesome, especially on medium difficulty. Got some claws. We can sell that at the store or at the marketplace. Different towns have different values, so they might like cloth. They may not. May not. Got some extra crowns, tools, supplies, some fruit, and uh, no, no extra weapons besides the one I picked up, though. Kind of surprised oh, Good that you at least picked up that one, then. Yeah. Uh, two actually I got the flail as well. So, um, that's, I mean, that's as far as that goes. We're going to come back and he's going to be like, congratulations, here's some money. 400, which you realize is kind of not a lot. Kind of trivial as far as all things are considered. Yeah. Hogart lies dead in a pool of his own blood, skewered into a grotesque and panicked pose. He didn't weasel his way out of this one. You put a boot on his corpse and look to your men. For the company, for all the men who've fallen. Eek! Spits it on the men's face. Let's take the bastard's head and get back to Crumhorn. It's not a cheerful mood that the men are in, but it's a content one. Like a blue horizon glowing before a furiously rising sun. The deed is done and the company avenged. In this world, that's about as much closer, closure as one can hope for. And I feel like that line right there says two things. Number one, tutorial's over. Start playing the game. Mm -hmm. Number two, that is what this game is about. Nice. It, the deed is yeah. done. The company is avenged. In this world, that's about as much closure as you can hope for. I mean, honestly, that whole segment, I think, was very fitting for the theme of the game. Yeah, and your men, your captain, they all died by some chump. We're going to pause real quick. You lead your way back to Crumhorn as Eek picks up the pace to catch up with you. Got a moment, Captain? You nod for him to speak his mind. The battle has left armor and shields battered, and the men have sustained some wounds. Perhaps we should make camp so we can get everywhere, everything in order and put some bandages on. Will be a lot quicker if we don't have to do it on the road. Every man maintains what equipment they carry, but you have the say of if they should repair some of the plunder as well. You need to have the tools for that, of course. Just to keep in mind that uh, in mind that camp's fire will be seen from afar, especially come nighttime. So, right there, just explain some mechanics without actually having to throw numbers in your way. Just kind of like, man. yeah, I, I kind of like that, honestly. While I wasn't a fan of that idea earlier on when we were talking about. Um like buying supplies and, and having enough money. Um, that I thought was pretty clear. Yeah, it, it it's, as I said, you play the game, you'll, after like a few missions, you pretty much learn most things you need to and everything else is just kind of like picking up little tips along the way. Mm -hmm. The company returns to Crumhorn as victors, their, he their heads held higher than the last time they visited. The Affinity Brothers are not the size that they once wore. But it's, too, it's still a force to be reckoned with, as Hoggart the Weasel learned too late. You carry his head in a sack that you empty in front of Gunner of Crumhorn's feet. As it rolls toward him, he takes a step back, momentarily startled, only to approach again with curiosity. So, it really is him? Yes, yes, I'm rid of him! <laughs> Gunner of Crumhorn rubs his hands, his face turning into a grimace of cold satisfaction. Not speaking a word, his eyes glued to the weasel's frozen and slack-jawed gaze. He clasps his hands on a servant to fetch a crown to pay you as promised. You raise your voice to the man. As long as there are blood, there's blood coursing through our veins, as long as we can hold sword and shield in hand, there shall stand the Affinity Brothers. We've done it before and we'll do it again. We'll make the company known throughout the land. 
Imagine if it was Battle Brothers instead, and that's their saying. Anyway, the men cheer. Wolf puts his hand on your shoulder. You did well, Captain. Whether we travel from one village to the next and look for work, or head out to explore and plunder as our own, the men will follow you as brothers in battle. Once again, you have options. His brothers! Dunzo. So we got paid. We were still really low on cash. But we have... But we came out with experience and one person leveled up. So let's experience hey. that real quick. Cool. Wolf, level up. So it's a random roll on what points you're going to get. Um, like the plus whatevers? Yes. Okay, so, but you get to at least choose. You get to choose up to three things. That's nice. And um, you can only choose those things once. And... Um, uh, the stars will like add plus one to the die. So basically, I rolled a two on this, I guess, and I got plus two, so it's a four. Ah, I, I think that's how the system okay. works. So um, huh. sometimes, like you keep them always focused, and sometimes you look at it and go plus two to hit points doesn't really seem super useful, but you know what it does? Plus four to range defense. So like you might level up a little differently every time. Hmm. So plus four hit points, pretty good deal. Yeah, um, I kind of like that. It's like random. Optimi like you're still the player's still choosing the like optimal path for these characters mm -hmm. but it still has randomization to it yeah it's uh it's like slight control um and then yeah. it, uh, like loose control i guess is the best way to describe <laughs> it in terms of what the player can do it keeps things interesting though on top of that we get a perk point and this is of course where all the fun is so uh fast ad adaptation or adaption is like every time you miss you get a plus seven percent chance stacking chance to hit and you get all these like really cool abilities crippling strike better chance to inflict injuries some things appear strictly better than others at first for instance student plus 20 experience and then once you reach level 11 you get a free perk point so you're paid back the one you spent on the experience nice that sounds really great however if he dies in the process who cares <laughs> so then you start looking at it going colossus may be better plus 25 percent hit points oh wait no that's uh yeah hit points are increased and it means you're less likely to be uh -huh. injured so, it's, so like, it's like, do you think he can survive as he is yeah. long enough to level up again? If they're mediocre, <laughs> I'll usually give them an experience game. If they're really valuable, I focus them. If they suck, mm. I'll give them either extra hit points or nine lives, which means once per battle when you are when you receive the killing blow, you survive for that one hit. Ah, You're I going like to that. be injured as hell when you get out of it, but that character could live. Mm. So like, you start to tweak them a little bit. Um, That's cool. Just the, the perks are really cool. I, I encourage you to check the game out and check the perks, and they're just really awesome. I just, whatever. <laughs> what is he? Is, is, plus, he's, who is this guy? Wolf. Oh, he's one of your guy. starting guys. He has pretty low hit points. I'm going to give him nine lives instead of Colossus. So, bam. If wolf has nine lives. <laughs> uh, you're dumb. <laughs> so, uh, that's it. Last thing I want to talk about is the houses, factions, and relations. Mm. So... Crumhorn is a city. We have a open uh, relation with them. That I guess guy has a swan like... on his head. He wow, he has a swan on his head. I want to be friends with that guy. Yeah, I mean, he's a. I nice... want to be friends with that guy too. <laughs> that is like that I is imagine one he's memorable always night. wearing this. <laughs> yeah. Always, it's like a real swan too. <laughs> it's just like reaches up, lets it eat some like food out of his hand. <laughs> Just like as he's talking to you, he'd be like, don't you dare come into our lands again. <laughs> and like crumbs falling like, off. Honest, he's just like... <laughs> <laughs> like hitting his metal uh, helmet. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> oh, that guy's awesome. So like we have a we have a good relationship with him, which means they're more likely to post jobs for us to take. Oh, okay. It That's can cool. go up to friendly, and then I think it even can even go to allied. I'm not really Ooh. sure. I haven't got that far, but I have a couple friendly relationships. Optionally, it can go really bad. I took a job from some people once, and they were like, transport this prisoner or these prisoners to uh, this one town. I was like, sure, no problem. Easy job. I'm probably not even going to get in a fight. Just get paid along the way. Started, got halfway there, and then all of a sudden dialogue started, and one of the prisoners was like, hey, I'm actually the prince over at this town over here. If you let me go, I will pay you ha handsomely. I was like, well, that sounds fishy. Let's do it. <laughs> so, but that meant that I killed everybody that I was working for. Like, that was, like, the people holding everybody prisoners. My, so you my were, company just murdered them. <laughs> just became a forever enemy to that house. Yes, every time I went near that city, they immediately sent uh, the militia after me. Was it worth but it, though? I got paid three grand. 
for returning that dude. So it was like, I'm always betraying people now. Like, it was great. <laughs> and I was, I like had like 200 gold left. So I was like, I was like, oh, I'm going to go poor next turn or next day. And then all of a sudden I got paid through a grant. Anyway, so that was <laughs> cool stuff. You can also, you have like how people view you as a whole. Do you kill people a lot? Is that mm. just all you do? That's what the jobs you're going to get. Do you like to uh, go on uh. like uh, caravan missions and make sure that people are safe? Those, those are the jobs you're going to get. Huh. Um, you also get, there's also house jobs. So these are the houses and they're basically, they're your nobility and mm -hmm. those, they control multiple cities. So you can get multiple jobs from the cities through the same house. Hmm. It's, there's a whole lot into the game and there's a whole lot more that they could add on top of that. The game has so much potential. I yeah. mean, it's like, it's great right now. There's also apparently mid game and late game events. Like I think a plague can start. Ooh. And houses can go to war with each other. I was gonna say, it seems like we're only really scratching the surface in this little, like, tutorial quest that we went through. Oh yeah, which well, is good. So much more to important. it. It's it's cool. Uh, I I love how the weapons, different weapons you equip, make you feel like you have given them a different class. It makes you feel like an intelligent fighter, and that's rare these days because usually a fighter means swing a sword. And that's it. <laughs> I so. think that's all we have. We are so over, and super I apologize. Super overtime. Super excited about this game. But let us know if you want us to come back and play more of this, because, I mean, there's still plenty more in the beta that we could explore, and then, obviously, there will be future builds of that, too. So... Question of the day, very simple. What do you want to see more come out of this game Ooh. before it's finished with this early access It's like my favorite question for early access games. Mm. <laughs> this is such a good one. Hey, guys. Until next time, appreciate it. Bye.